Today we're looking at lead code number 74. It's called search a 2D matrix. And this problem can be a little tricky when you go for the optimal solution. So we'll go over a brute force solution. We'll look at a very brute force solution. We'll look at a semi-optimal solution. And then we'll look at a very optimal solution. Okay, so there's three different ways we can approach this. So here we have a prompt. We need to write an efficient algorithm that searches for a value in an M by N matrix. And the matrix has the following properties. Integers in each row are sorted from left to right. Okay. And the first integer of each row is greater than the last integer of the previous row. So the first integer of this row is going to be greater than the last integer of this row. That's important to remember. So here we can see that our target is three and it is in the matrix right over here. So we're going to output true. And then here our target is 13. We don't have a 13 in this matrix, so we are outputting false. We have some constraints over here. Okay, so let's think about how we can approach this. Now, brute force, what, what could we do? We could just scan through all three of these, right? Like here we would have, uh, let me just write in our indices here. We have 0, 1, and 2. 0, 1, 2, and 3 for our columns. And so what we could do is we could just scan through the 0th row and check is there a 3 there. In this case it is, but let's say this was 34. We could scan through the second row and check is 34 in there. And then we could scan through the third row and check 34 is in there. It, it is in there, and so we return true, right? So that's one way we could do it. What would our time complexity be if we chose that path? Well, it's it's O of M times N, okay? So that would abbreviate out to O of N squared. It would be O of M for the um, number of rows times N for the number of columns, okay? Which would just abbreviate out, abbreviate out to O of N squared. And it's not very good, okay? So that's not a very good time complexity. Now, because the list is sorted, any time we're dealing with a sorted list, we should immediately think binary search. It's log n, much better than n, okay? And that's one way we could approach this. So let's say, let's say we were going to try to approach this in a different way, something similar to what we were doing right here, except we want to just optimize it a little bit. In, because we know that each one of these rows are sorted, we could iterate over each row and then perform binary search to see if the target is in there. Okay, so here we're going to do M operations for each of these rows. And then for N, we're just going to do log of N on each one of those rows. Okay, so that would be our time complexity using that approach. It would be M times log of N, or we could say O of N log n to uh, to use that approach, which is better, right? Um, n log n is much better than n squared, obviously. But can we do better than this? Could we do even better than this? And I think one thing to notice is that because in the prompt, it lets us know, and this is a little clue it gives us, it says the first integer of each row is greater than the last integer of the previous row. That means not only are these numbers sorted by row, okay, or sorted by column, but the last integer of the previous row is going to be less than the first integer of the current row. So they're also sorted uh, from this direction as well, okay? And so now, what if, what if we did a different approach? What if, instead of scanning through each row, we took advantage of the fact that these, this matrix is sorted uh, from the start to the very end, going that way, okay? And if we were able to make this our left and this our right, and then run binary search uh, as if the matrix was one large list, then we could get log n on the size of the matrix. Okay, which is really good. And so we'll go step by step. So if we did it this way, we have our left pointer here and our right pointer here. This would be our mid. 
okay? Because we could just assume that this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is gonna be six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Half of that would be six, and that would be our mid, uh, our mid, mid uh, variable. So now we know where our mid is. We can just run a normal binary search. We can say, okay, is, is the mid less than the target? It is, so let's go ahead and move right over here and make this our new mid. Okay, and so now we say, is this mid less than the target? It is, so we go ahead and move right over here and make this our mid, and then it's not less than the, the left, and so now we go ahead and uh, make this our mid over here, and we find our target. And how many operations are we doing here? Let's think about that. Well, the size of our list is 12. We're gonna divide by two, that's going to get us six. Okay, so we have one operation there. Let's uh, make this a little bit clearer. So here we have 12, which is the size of the matrix, divided by two. Okay, then we're going to get six divided by two, which gives us three. And then we're going to do three divided by two. So in three operations, we can get to our target using binary search. Versus, let's take a look at the n log n approach. Okay, let me just clear some of this stuff out here. Okay, now if we're doing the, the n log n approach, we're doing one operation here, which is the zero scan. Okay, so that's, uh, we'll just put a one there. And then what are we gonna times that by the size of the row, which is going to be n, okay? plus two times the size of the row, which is n. Now, if we did uh, log n, okay, we could do one times uh, the size of n by log, so log n plus two times log n, and so on and so forth, okay? So you can see that n log n is much less efficient than using a log n approach, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into the code. Uh, if this still doesn't make sense, I think it'll make more sense once we kind of walk through the code. So here, let's go ahead and put um, our, our rows into a variable. So we'll say this is matrix.length. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put our columns in a variable. So we'll call this matrix at index zero dot length. Okay, and now we wanna get our left and right. So we can say left is gonna be zero and right is going to be the size of the matrix, which is going to be rows times columns minus one because we're dealing with indices. So we wanna do minus one. So now that we have that set up, all we have to do is run binary search. So we can just say while left is less than or equal to right, what do we want to do? We want to get our mid. So let mid equal math.floor. Now, a couple different ways you can do this. This is actually the best way to do this. You want to do left plus uh, right minus left divided by two. The reason you want to do that instead of doing left plus right divided by two is that if you add left and right and your numbers are huge, that might go out of the range that your language can hold for an, for an integer, okay? But if you do right minus left, the, uh, the number will never go like outside of that range. You, you, can, you, can, you can actually get to the very end of um, the upper bound of what your language can hold as an integer. So this is a much better approach. It just, it just works better for bigger numbers, okay? And so now we want to get our, um, our mid element, okay? And so what we want to do here is we want to do uh, our matrix. I'm sorry, our mid elements, our mid value. So let's go ahead and call that mid value. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to do math.floor and we want to do our right divided by columns as our uh, first index, and our second index is gonna be right modulus columns. 
And if it doesn't make sense why we're doing this, I would just kind of draw it out on a pen and paper to see why that makes sense. But that's what we want to do. We want to floor, we want to do a right divided by columns and then floor that as our first index, our uh, row index, then our column index, we just want to use the mod operator. So now that we have our value, now we just have to check it against the target. So we can say if mid val equals target, then we just return true. Okay, and if it doesn't, so we can say if mid val is less than target, then what do we want to do? Uh, actually, I like to write it this way better. It just makes it cleaner. We can say if target is less than mid val, then what do we want to do? Then we want to move our right to mid minus one. So we can say right equals mid minus one okay else we want to say left equals mid plus one and if we don't find it there then we just go ahead and return uh, false okay let's go ahead and run this okay we have a slight little bug here okay so we don't want to divide by two let's just jump right over here we just want to do um, left plus right minus left, okay? Because we're dealing with a matrix. Let's go ahead and run that, and we're good. Okay, so that is how we, how we do that. Let's go ahead and run this one more time, see if we can get better performance. Um, it's, it's log n, you know, it's log n. This is, this is kind of inconsistent on, on what it tells you, but we're using constant space with this, and we're using uh, log n, we're performing in log n time, which is really good. Okay, so that is lead code number 74, search a 2D matrix. This is a fun problem. It is tricky because you have to be careful, like these two lines right here, I think are the hardest part about this, is figuring out the mid and the mid val. Um, and if you, if you have trouble with that, I guess you can talk to your interviewer and see if you can get some clues to kind of step through that. If you stare at this long enough, it'll make sense on why it works. Uh, but it could be hard to come up with this in, the, in a live interview because binary search is not that difficult, but this is just a slight twist on binary search. Anyway, that's Lead Code 74. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see everyone on the next one.